anymore. Like even the bad past. You know, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Not like it ever happened, but more like just lear we, take, we've learned from it. Yeah, take the lessons that you learned. Um, I think that's good. And also just not comparing my so like you know I've I've done this a lot this year and Alex can attest to it and it's created a lot of depression for me and things like that when you literally look at your subscriber count and you're not well PewDiePie. Yeah. Um, and that's that's not a healthy way to look at things. And you know I've done it too where. I, I compare myself, but I always have to. Tr it's just you gotta, you just gotta learn how to bring yourself back down. Yeah, well, not, not, not not only uh, that, but <laughs> it, it also makes it so you don't enjoy the content that you're doing. Yeah, and so it, and that I, that to me is like the greater sin, <laughs> is yeah. like why would I even do this if I didn't enjoy it? Yeah. And so that's that's really why I'm trying to make that goal is because I I do actually want to enjoy the content that I provide and be able to have just as much a good time as you guys are having watching it. So I make I, I'm making that a goal. Like, I'm not going to compare myself to bigger YouTube channels, especially in, in concept, because it does belittle the people who actually have subscribed to my channel and to Dragon Shadow. Yeah, because uh, they they took time out of their day to to try out our content and we weren't PewDiePie to them, you know, yeah, we're ideally something that they find special. Exactly. So at that point, I, I'm more interested in more being myself with you guys, being real with you guys, and also just having a good time. Yeah. And I'm, that's, I, I think that's the bigger thing that's to be excited about, because we actually do have a lot of awesome stuff on the horizon. What the heck? Um, he actually, he he got out, so you can only hold oh. him for a certain amount of time, and then they, they get out. Oh, that was kind of funny. All right, so here we go again. But once I wasn't failing miserably, jeez. No, 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 you weren't failing. <laughs> That much. That much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, don't. at least I have Yoshi, so uh. this is going to be easy. Now, there is one secret that I am going to try and unlock uh, in this playthrough, and that is just simply for our benefit. And that is the top top secret area. Top secret area. I'm, I'm going to get that. Do, do you know what that one is? Yeah, I know that okay. one. Yeah, we're going to get that because that's going to be really helpful later on. Boom, I, I literally boom, won't play boom. Mario World without it. Ever since I discovered it, I won't ever play it without it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I want that top secret area. Oh, this save file doesn't have it? Yeah, screw that. I'm not playing. <laughs> there we go. Do, 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 and I guess that would be do, do, do. also be the advice I would give to any like brand spanking new YouTuber right now is is don't because this this is also going to come into play of the constant comparison that we have, like people want to compare us to the game grounds. OK, that's fine. We're you can go ahead and do that. But I'm also kind of not wanting to play into that anymore because, well, we're a different product. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, we've we've said it numerous times. You know, you can call us Aaron and having a rage or whatever. But I mean, every Let's Player has had a rage segment on one of their videos. So I'm just not looking to fully endorse that anymore. Especially since in a lot of cases, it's usually people bringing it up as like a quasi insult. Yeah, it's an insult to you. It's not to us. But then, uh, you know, to that, I always want to say it's sort of, you know, there's this great quote from Doug, but I can never remember how it goes. Doug Walker? No, not Doug Walker. Just oh. the show, Doug. Doug. <laughs> Right. It, the whole episode's about everybody thinks Doug is like copying this popular fashion model because the, yeah. the model wears like the same exact clothes. And then like and later on, Judy, like kind of assures Doug, it's like, and I, like I said, I can't remember how it actually went. But she's like, if nobody copied anybody, we'd all still be living in caves or something like that. So well, and, and we've said it numerous times, but I mean, in the video game business, imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, because I mean. Lord knows. Every platformer that's come ever since Mario is imitating Mario. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason that it was or actually Sonic. a compliment back in the day to be called a Doom clone for shooters. Yeah. So at that point, yeah, if we're that, then great. Then uh, to me, that that doesn't hurt us. That that basically makes me look at it and go, oh, so, you know, like, hey, we're we're, all, we're going in the right direction then. Yeah, we could be. If we we could just be don't have the subscribers yet. If we could be half as good as them, I'm happy. The other thing, too, that I'm also going to warn people in advance is some of this might not necessarily be happening on YouTube because Who knows? As you guys have seen the climate on YouTube is changing very drastically and uh, we might have to adapt with the times. Yeah. 
I am actually getting legitimately concerned that oh. YouTube will not be here in like one to two years because they keep on ending themselves up in really nasty controversies. Oh, man, I suck at those pull jumps. Did, did we just officially unlock? I don't know. Secret area? I don't know. I can't remember. I I'll go back in if we didn't. I did find a nifty shortcut. Nope, oh. you didn't, because this this unlocks the bridge. Ow. So I'm probably going to go back in. Yeah, so uh, you got to continue and save. All right. So I'll go back in and, and get us top secret area. Top secret area. It's very secret. Except I can't take Yoshi in. It's too scary. It's too scary. It's too scary for him. And I guess bef before I get started. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, Watch oh, out. The oh, boos yeah. are coming. Yep. The boos will continue to come. The boos. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, now I know what we have to do. Yep, that's where we need to go. Okay, you gotta flutter up. Ow. Except, yeah, I gotta make it, I gotta make it work ideally. So... Okay. Oh, Ooh. give me my cape. Okay. Let's do this. There nice. we go. So come up here. And this will get us the Ow. Oh. Invisible extra life. Just as scrumptious as regular extra lives. So I'll take these two. I have a whopping 12 lives. 13 lives. That's not good. <laughs> and I still have like four. Okay, so here we go. Whopping 15. It's no secret. Adam is better at this game than I am. It's almost like I've been playing it longer than you have. That's true. And so I guess the, the next thing that we can get into. Oh, bonus game. Ba -ba -ba. Yay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Watch me fail at this because I, I don't ever get them even in my spare time. Okay. Boom. Boom. See, I'm already failing. Failing horribly. There we go. And I got none. <laughs> no, nothing. Not a... You See, the, the ideal goal here is to get all stars, so then at that point you can walk away with, like, five lives. So now we have the top secret area, which we can now utilize, and I don't think it counts as a level. No, it's just a little area. So the next thing that we need to get into, I've been hinting at enough because uh, it just barely happened and we, we've already kind of talked about the YouTube climate. How do we feel about this whole YouTube kids fiasco? Ugh, just goes to show you, YouTube just is retarded. Maybe YouTube is um, more focused on non-problems. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, like, like, like I just barely told you off screen. Maybe they're maybe they're more focused on Sargon of Akkad than they should be. Yeah, they're focused. They're worried about, oh, a few maybe right wing channels or ISIS videos that might have like five views. Yeah. Ooh. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to filter another question into there because it, it, it's kind of related. We, a while back, we actually talked about like the the climate of YouTube and, and um, you know, how we know that like everybody else, YouTube is biased. Yeah. Um, it's very clear that they are, and that's what you're walking into. Well, fuck. <laughs> um, so at that point, the other question that we got way back when, and we can answer here is, so if you don't like the biases on YouTube, do you actually, like, do you actually support channels that are of opposing opinion than YouTube? And I'll go ahead and let you kind of take over for, for that one bef while I take care of the level, but do you actually support, like, some of these conservative channels or... Uh, I would dare say you probably don't support ISIS. No, obviously not, but, uh, yeah, confession, yes, I... Yes, a closet traitor, everybody. Uh, confession, I do listen to Sargon of Akkad. I don't always agree with him, but... But you're not supposed to. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, I actually will openly admit I am subscribed to Sargon of Akkad. Yeah. Because I actually do like the idea of supporting opposing opinions. Not because I'm trying to piss everybody off, but because I like having that exchange. Mm-hmm. Um... Because even though sometimes that exchange is, is difficult for some, it's necessary. It's necessary for us all to grow. Ah, dang it. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's necessary for us all to grow um, and to get better. Like, we, we can't just immediately assume that 
here in our vacuum, here in our echo chamber, that we know everything. Yeah. Because we really don't. Uh, yeah, I subscribe to Sargon of the Cod, uh, Steven Crowder, Prager U. You guys can even see this in my subscriptions. I subscribe to uh, Dave Rubin. I do like Dave Rubin and what he tries to do from the left end, which is also what Sargon tries to do. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but guys, Sargon tries to do that, even though, you know, he's hor- I will actually say the one thing that maybe has changed that I don't support everything is um, people might remember when I when we started, I actually admitted that I was a subscriber to Feminist Frequency. Then VidCon happened. Yeah. And I am I can happily admit I am no longer a supporter of Femi Feminist Frequency and I have no intention of debating Anita Sarkeesian anymore. Simply because why would I argue with a brick wall? And also... It's v become very painfully clear to me that Anita is nothing more than a bully. So I'm just I'm not interested in the interactions that Anita would have with people. But there you go. I, I support tons of channels that that at least open uh, are more open minded. I, for crying out loud, I even support uh, Joe Rogan. Like occasionally I find his podcast to be very entertaining. And he, he, it's not like he's talking to everybody who's right leaning. He's he's actually got a lot of fair lefties that he that he talks to and and can at least give them kind of a fair shake in the light of day. But anyway, back to the uh, so there you go. Those are channels that we support to kind of counteract the obvious bias in in YouTube. Oh, you got at least you got two. Yeah, I got two. Look got at two. me go. Woo! You're actually having a good time now. Can we make this work? Yay! Oh. We got three. So, I mean, oh. <laughs> if that's a problem for you as subscribers that, that we follow these guys, then mm. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. This is why in a lot of cases I don't bring up politics on the podcast is a lot of people kind of use that as a way to dictate whether or not you continue <laughs> to listen. It's like, if you don't believe what I believe, then I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Well, well that's, that's your... a very narrow minded way to look at things, but it's you're your entitled to your opinion. Yeah, it's your choice. So with the fiasco, I guess I'm the one that can talk about this. Well, actually, you know what? I want to do it from your perspective because you're not a parent. Yeah. So I'm, I got a bias on this one. But yeah. uh, how do you feel about this whole YouTube kids fiasco? You know, it it's really terrible and it shows. <laughs> well, I was going to give you the floor, but I guess yeah. not. I mean, yeah, it's, I'm not a parent, so it's harder for me to relate for like parental issues. But yeah. but I, I like to think I'm close enough with my little niece here, your daughter. And but it's like it's just. It goes to show you. You start showing your YouTube kids that I have a problem. <laughs> well, I'm not going to show her that off. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, this is your, this is your platform. This is your app. This is your, this it's is your watch. You know, yeah, this is something you're supposed to control. And right? and like we just said, I mean, it's it's very clear to us as, as content creators as well as viewers on YouTube where your attention was. Yeah. You, you were, were you were more interested in the whole VidCon MythCon debates that have been happening, and you're more interested in silencing silencing people that you don't agree with than, well, protecting my kids. Okay, how do you fly? I can never. Uh, you need to get enough speed. Right. See, I'm used to this because of Mario Three. You're not. <laughs> so, well, you're used to it because of Mario World. Yeah. But you just need you need to get to a point where you you have your arms out, like that. And that's how you fly. Okay. Um, as a parent, like part of the, okay, so the way I actually found out about this whole fiasco was Phil DeFranco. Mm -hmm. And I occasionally have these moments with Phil where it's just like, I want you to be wrong. I want you to be wrong on this. We all want them there's to. so many horrible things that can come from this horrible precedents. So I did the one thing I probably shouldn't have done. You went and looked And I actually up. watched a few of these videos. And Phil, you weren't wrong. I I would dare say you downplayed it a little bit. Yeah. But you weren't wrong. Uh, in particular, I watched uh, one where, oh, dude was, or they had a Spider-Man and a Catwoman, and uh, eventually the fight ended up on a bed with Catwoman on top of Spider-Man in, you know, kind of a compromising position. And, and in turn, they started making some motions they shouldn't have. And I'm just like, how on earth is this approved on a kid's app? Because YouTube didn't pay the slightest bit of attention. Yeah, they, they really didn't. I, I can't really uh, 
blame Phil DeFranco on what he was saying on this matter. They just, they weren't paying attention. They were more interested in people that didn't agree with them, people who were doing wrong thinking, to actually pay attention to their own damn backyard. And uh, now we have this problem. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. Alex, I have to do this now. You should not. That should not have worked. That should not have worked. That was a fluke and a half. That should not have worked. And I loved it. That was I a I think fluke. that's becoming our, our bigger saying than, <laughs> than that's platforming. Yeah. Uh, which technically we should be doing a lot of here. Morton's Castle. We're going to go into Morton because he hears a who. Morton hears a who. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I watched a few of those videos and I'm very glad that my daughter has never had access to YouTube kids. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Um... I wish I could say that I and, and the worst part about it is like YouTube did deserve Adpocalypse 2.0 on this one. They deserve to have kid friendly companies like Mars pull their support. Yeah. Whoop. You know, this is uh, it's like the whole like, oh, advertiser friendly, which was a knee jerk reaction to maybe a couple extremist videos. But I always felt there, there was a lot of air of hypocrisy in that. But this one is actually yeah. YouTube's legitimate fault here. This is legit. This is their legitimate fault. I mean, before before this point, I mean, you did have the PewDiePie incident, which wasn't YouTube's fault. It was it was PewDiePie. But you, we, like we said in our, our video covering is like the wind was already blowing in that direction for some of those creators and some of those advertisers. So it wasn't necessarily on PewDiePie that the adpocalypse happened. Yeah. It's just other things were being brought to light to these other companies. And they weren't happy about it, obviously. Including Disney not being happy with PewDiePie and, you know, they were probably going to let him go anyway, but this just kind of gave them more incentive to do it. So the, I guess the bigger problem that, that comes out of this is that as content creators, this doesn't look good for us. No, it does not look good for us to stay on YouTube. So I'm just going to warn some of our loyal followers. You're still going to get your content. Don't worry about it. But as we move forward, we are going to have to go look at other places, other other areas to put our work, because I'm really concerned YouTube will not be here one to two years from now. Yeah, it, it won't. If I mean, if this doesn't kill it, net neutral the uh, net neutrality being repealed will kill it. Yeah, it, well, there, there's just there's too many things, too many uh, problems on the cards right now for YouTube that I begin to worry very seriously about how YouTube is going to be able to avoid any um, fault or blame or financial repercussions from yeah. this. And it's not like YouTube is earning Google money. Yeah, I think it's always a essentially it's always a, in debt. a loss. Uh, for the you company. know, in a lot of cases, we've we've done a lot of praising to YouTube in the past, but it's it's never been a money maker for Google. Yeah, and that's probably why there haven't been a lot of really viable competitors. Yeah, it, so at that point, it's just it's something that we'll have to look at in the future, and we'll obviously let you guys know, so yeah. you guys can come and support us on those. Dun, on those dun, dun, dun. Oh, hi, Morton. Are you hearing a who? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Now. <laughs> Stop. Boom. There we go. Ow. Ow. And of course, the typical Mario Mario boss fight of three hits and they're dead. Yeah. Oh, there no. We go. <laughs> oh, no, he's moving faster. What on earth will I do? Oh, How about no. I just smack him. <laughs> Yay! We win! So that's two castles already today. I'm happy about Two that. castles. We're we're making some progress yeah. here. Clean boys. All right, here we go. Radio voice incoming. Morton Cooper Jr. of the castle number two is now just a memory. The next area is the underground vanilla dome. What traps await Mario in this new world? What will become a princess toadstool, a.k.a. Peach? Oh, we can't call her that. That's misogyny. <laughs> Peach. I don't have any respect for it. Actually, the, the part that you're going to find funny about that whole thing, Alex, what made me lose respect for her? I've made it clear I'm not the biggest fan of Boogie 2988. Now, granted, I'm not. We, we've kind of clarified I'm not a fan of the Francis character. Right. That he's created. But one of the things that actually got me to unsubscribe to Femin Feminist Frequency is aptly enough 
her treatment of Boogie 2988 at her VidCon panel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, at the, her and Sargon. So it's one of those things where if I ever make it to a con where Boogie's there, I might have to go up to him in person and just apologize. Like, because I, I spewed a lot of crap about it, and it really it is the character that I didn't like yeah. from the channel. So... That's on me, and I do apologize for it. So maybe at, at, when I get to a con eventually that has Boogie there, I might have to say, can I pull you aside for a second? Because I have a YouTube channel, and I've been saying a lot of shit about you. <laughs> and I'm sorry. 